tonight we'll be making a holiday gift card holder. I know, I told you we'd be making something from the brand new mini catalog that's coming out in January, but I need to have 14 gift card holders for my nieces and nephews, and I needed them like yesterday so I could get them mailed to them in time for Christmas. For those cards, we'll be needing only two stamps for the sentiments, and those stamps will come from the A Wish for Everything and Delivering Cheer stamp set. And we'll also need two embossing folders. One is time-worn type 3D embossing folder, and the other one is the Merry Melody 3D embossing folder. We'll be using four different types of pattern paper, all from the Heartwarming Hugs Designer Series paper, also known as DSP. I want to thank Sarah Edwards for these designs. Hi, I'm Joan Heberlein and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator and I created this video for Joan's Simple Paper Crafts found right here on YouTube. If you're new here, I want to thank you for stopping by. And if you're a returning guest, welcome back. Be sure to subscribe by clicking the subscribe button below. That way you won't miss when I post a video which is typically once a week. Now give me a second so I can turn the camera down and we can get started. Well, here are the gift card holders and we have the Merry Christmas on the front and that is from the Wish From Everything. Here is the Merry and here's the Christmas. And then on the inside we have our Sending Love and Christmas Cheer and that is taken from the Delivering Cheer, Sending Love and Christmas Cheer. And then on the back, we have the gift card holder. So it's a little pocket there that it can go in. And then you just slip this back inside. Just make sure you get that underneath so it goes back together. And then you could also put cash in. One thing I want to point out is when I was making this, I didn't pay attention to what side I put it on and I had put it, it all together on this side and that's where the pocket is, where this side is taped down. So just keep in mind where the tape side is versus the pocket. What we're going to do is I'm going to take you through Making this card, this is a card that's very easy to do assembly line processing. So I'm going to show you how I made this. And I've got quite a few of these already made up. So I made four of those, four of these, and four of these. So what we're going to do is we're going to make another design. using another design of the Heartwarming Hugs Designer Series paper. And so when you're cutting the paper, you want to cut it at four and a quarter by three inches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this 12 by 12 inch piece of Designer Series paper and cut it at four and a quarter. And then we'll take it and we'll cut it at the three inches. So we'll get four cards out of this, this portion of the designer series paper. So that's one. Two. And three. Why didn't I get four? I must not have had a 12 by 12 inch piece of paper. Okay, so we've got three pieces here. Then next we're going to do, we're going to score that at one and a half inches. So that's right down the middle here. And I'm going to score it lightly because it is a designer series paper and I don't want to have it tear it so I'm just doing going very lightly. Okay, we'll go this way. And 
and then then I would fold this in half on that score line and burnish it and I make sure that it matches up when I do the fold line. Sometimes when you score it, it doesn't quite match exactly and I'm going to want this to match exactly. So I'm just holding it in place and just using the score line as a guide now. See it, we have it coming a little bit of white on the back side and I'm going to want to get that back out of there. So I'm just lining the paper up and I'm just going to burnish it. So the next we want to do is we want to put a piece of tape on the bottom edge, this long bottom edge. And we're going to just use tear and tape because we want it to have a strong hold and that'll work best, I think. And so those are ready. We'll just set those aside. Then the next piece we need is our main card and we need a piece of three and a half by eight inch. We're going to take this three and a half by eight inch and score it at four inches. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take half inch off of the eight inch side because this is an eight and a half by 11. So let's just take a half inch off. So I've got it lined up at eight. And I'm just going to trim that. So now all the rest will be at eight inches. So now we just need to cut three and a half inch. And we'll do another three and a half inch. And the third three and a half inch. And I should have scored this before I cut it at the four inch mark. So now I'm going to have to score it three different times. That's okay. We can do that. Scoring's not that difficult. So let's do it four inch. One more thing that we need to cut out is our inner piece. So this piece right here. And I'm going to make that with basic white thick cardstock so it'll hold up going in and out of the card. So this is the thick cardstock and we need to cut it at five and three eighths. So I'm going to cut this at five and three eighths. And then we'll cut this at two and three quarters. And another two and three quarters. And one more two and three quarters. And now I think we're done with our trimmer. So let's pack that up. And as long as I have this out here, we'll go ahead and get these stamped. And this is going to be done in real red. And we're going to stamp it with the Sending Love and Christmas Cheer. And I'm just going to stamp it in the middle of the card. But once we put this card is have it completely assembled it'll be like on the top half of the card because we're going to put that designer series paper on the top portion of this card so we're done there the next thing we need to do is stamp our Merry Christmas on the front of the card now I've already done that and the reason I did it is because it took me a lot to get it lined up because I Put the stamp on crooked. So when you get the red rubber, you have to put the, the Mary and the Christmas on the back. And I've got them crooked. When I did this, this lines up properly. But I have a difficult time getting it in the right spot on this card. And actually, when I set up the stamp, 
this is me trying to get it on here straight. I took me a long time to do that. So anyways, I finally got them stamped and I got this one already done. So all we need to do is we need to use our punch. So we're going to use our banners pick a punch and we're going to use this one here. So this punch will punch out six different types of banners. They start at a half an inch and then the three quarter of an inch and a one inch banner and that would do this pointed edge and then this one here will do the flag edge at the half an inch three quarters of an inch and a one inch so i've got it as as a half inch and i'm going to flip it over this way and put it in slide it in and we're going to line it up back here so I want it to be lined out so the point is in the center of that card. I've got it pushed down and I'm checking to make sure it's still lined up and then I'm just going to punch. So that is taken care of. We might want to trim that off and do it again because all these other ones I've got are a lot shorter. So let's just trim a little bit of that off and we'll try it again. When you have a short piece of paper that you want to use in this punch, you want to extend it so that you can still hang on to it and get it up there. So now I can hang on to it a lot easier. See, now I can hang on to it and get it lined up a lot easier. There we go. So there's our punch. So these are dry now, so we can move those to the side. And this is dry, so let's move that to the side. And I am going to clean this off using our stamp and scrub. And I'll scrub this again. I don't think it was dirty, but let's just do it because it's going to be put away in a few seconds. So, all right. So the last piece we need to do is we need to get tape on to the base card. That's where we cut these out. And I wanted to emboss these with the Merry Melody. So that's the this right here. It shows the notes. To do that, we want to fold this in half along the score line. And just make sure that it lines up properly. And then we will just use our boning folder to burnish the fold. So then next we'll put them into our folder. So this is musical notes and here's the bass and the treble clef. So I am going to put this in here so I know that that's the top of the, the folder and this is the bottom of the folder. So I am going to make sure I have the opening edge at the top and I am going to line it up down toward the middle portion. So I think that's how I want that. And then I'm just going to put it through our embossing folder. And by the magic of YouTube, I already have it done. So next we will do is we will put the tape on here. And I'm not going to do these right now. So we'll do those later. So then the next thing I would do is I would put tape on all three of these pieces. And we want to just put tape on one side at the top of the long edge and the bottom of the long edge. And 
and then I would have all my piecework done. So next we would want to do is the assembly portion. I would start by taking the paper backings off the tape. And then just closing it up. And it's an awful tight close closure. So what I do is I take my bone folder, if I can get this open just a little bit, and then I put my bone folder in there and I make some wiggle room there because we want to be able to put our piece in and out. So I'm just sort of breaking up the fibers and giving it a little more wiggle room. And then I just want to make sure that I didn't undo the tapes on the very edges. And let's just see how we're doing here. Yeah, so that is going to work. And I'm just going to get rid of the other of these because we'll only work with one now from this point forward. Then the next we want to do is we want to get our card top on here. So I've got that centered on here. We need a piece of grid paper and we're going to set our top of the card with the tape side closest to you and I am going to center it on this grid paper from left to right and then we're going to take our sentiment portion and it's going to face up, but it's going to put it on the top portion of that top of the card. And we want to center that on here as well. We need to bring this down to the fold line and right here is where the fold line is. And so I have it along this dotted line right there. And I just moved it. So let me move this down here. So there's my fold line along the dark line. And then we get this centered on here, right to left. And then we're going to pull our tape. And it moved on me. I just wanted to make sure I still got things centered properly. Looks like it's still centered properly. And I'm just going to fold this over and it, fold it down. So now this is attached here and we have our opening back here for your gift card. So then you can just slide it in here into your envelope that you made and it's still centered. So next thing you want to do is you want to put your ribbon on and we're going to use this ribbon here and I'm going to just trim one edge, get it flat and I'm going to leave it on the spool. It works a lot easier on the spool for me and I'm going to take our glue dots and I'm going to take one glue dot and put it on the center of the this card and I'm going to determine where the center is by using the grid again so I've got it let's see got it between so it's going to go right here so there's one and three quarters on this side and one and three quarters on this side. So we put the glue dot down and then we're going to put the ribbon there. And I find it easier to turn the paper now to get the ribbon centered properly. So let's just get that one and three quarters centered again. So there I have it centered. And I'm going to roll it over And let's find the one and three quarters on both sides again. There's our center and I'm going to take another glue dot and put 
put it down. And let's make sure we've got that one and three quarters. And I'm just pull, pulling the ribbon taut and putting it down. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take our ecstatic. And we don't carry it on Stampin' Up! doesn't carry this anymore. But it's, it's used for embossing to remove the static from your paper. But it also helps to remove the stickiness. So this ribbon is sheer. And so the glue dot kind of comes through. So that to just remove that st stickiness of that glue dot. And then I'm just going to trim this up. So that is done. So I'm going to put this back in because now we need to do the glue dot on the top portion. And I want to have it centered. So I am going to say that it is right here. I'm following this line and it happens to follow where the other one was so that's good. That means it is centered and we have it on there straight. And I'm going to turn my paper again and we're going to put the ribbon down. And I am just going to trim this again. So if I separate a little bit, then I can see where the edge is falling. And then we're going to just flip this over and we will find the center again, put another glue dot down. And then I'm going to just pull this taut again and run it right over the other ribbon. And then I'm just going to pull this out completely. So I'm going to just trim this even with the red top of the card. Hopefully these scissors will work. Yes, it worked. So now we have this card done. And what I need to do next is get this put on there. This being our Merry Christmas. So we'll just do another glue dot. And I'm just going to take the glue dot, take the Merry Christmas and get it stuck on there pull it off and then we're going to go underneath the ribbon and then we're going to add one more glue dot put it on the ribbon top of on top of the other glue dot and then we need to do our bow. So to do the bow I just do two loops and I cross the loops over. So I'm going to grab about three inches worth and loop it. 
and do another three inches and then pull it underneath. And this is where I have trouble with my dexterity. So you probably don't need to do three inches worth, but I find I can get a bow done and then I just tighten it up to get it as small as I want it to be. And I tighten one and then I go back and I tighten the other. Just trim one side here and then we'll line up the bow on the up here. And then I can trim the other side. So there we have it. And then you can just simply put your credit card or money in there. You don't actually have to have this be a holiday card or a gift card. You could just have it be a, a greeting card without putting any gift card in the back. And then this would work for other occasions too. Birthday cards, baby shower, wedding shower, so let me get my other cards back in here. I hope you like this project as much as I did. As you can see, it would work great with just about any stamp sentiment. Why don't you give it a try? Now, if you enjoyed today's video, would you do me two favors? Click the thumbs up emoji. That means you like it. And would you share it on social media with your crafting friends and pin it to Pinterest? These actions will help me to sh keep sharing my ideas with other crafters for free, and I'd really appreciate that. Be sure to hit the subscribe button below. That way you won't miss when I post a video. If you have any questions, be sure to contact me. I'm here to help in any way that I can. If you don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I'd love to be your demonstrator. Just reach out to me. If you'd like to place a Stampin' Up! order or would like a catalog, Hop over to my website where you'll find the Shop Now button. To shop with me, you'll need to go to joanheberline.stampinup.net. Bear with me a little bit longer because I want to let you know of the promotions going on right now. Our next promotion is the Last Chance Products Sale. The July-December 2021 mini catalog will be retiring soon. It's all bittersweet to see a classic Stampin' Up! catalog take a trip to the retirement. But we're looking forward to all the new products on their way, and we hope you are too. Stock up on your favorite products before they're gone for good. Save up to 50% on essential craft supplies. What are you waiting for? Start shopping. After all, this selection of last chance products is only available while supplies last. The sale starts December 1st at 12 a.m. Mountain Time and ends January 3rd at 11.50 p.m. Mountain Time. Check the comments section below for a list of retiring items and the carryover items. Mark your calendars. I'll be back Wednesday. December 22nd at 7 p.m. Central Time. We'll be making thank you cards. I hope you'll be here to join me. Thanks so much for being here with me tonight. I look forward to next time. Bye for now, and don't forget to subscribe.